This is Senator Bill Frist. To look for the right direction for America, follow Stu Taylor. Audio. Yeah, no audio. Okay. Uh, we, we are on, correct? Okay, this is Stu Taylor. I assume we're on. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. All right, uh, joining us right now, uh, live from beautiful Ontario, Canada, is uh, Cindy D. Nolan. Uh, she is the author of a book called Betrayal. It's published by iUniverse. You can go to iUniverse.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or Amazon.com. And uh, I also have to say I had a nice conversation with Cindy just before the interview here. She is an accomplished musician and oil painter. So she's got a lot of skills, uh, probably none of them of which I have, but that's okay. It's great to have you on. I'll learn from you. Cindy, welcome. Good morning. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it is. A talented lady, obviously. When did your writing career uh, begin? I actually started writing at the same time I started playing instruments in, in the 80s and couldn't get into books. I have about five or six books I started, but I had no passion in the stories. So I would start four or five chapters and put them down. and just I didn't even enjoy them. And I heard somewhere that you have to really experience life before you can become a great writer. And that is a true statement. Yeah, how much experience do I need before I become a great writer? <laughs> you need so, to have your heart ripped out of your chest. Yeah. You need to be run over by a couple of trucks. Well, you know, you really you don't want to go there. <laughs> well, you know what they say. In order to become an expert in any field, you should have 10,000 hours. Oh, I think uh, I, got, I have about 20. All right. So that makes you twice the expert as anyone else. Talk right. about betrayal. What it's, what it's about. It's really about... Um, uh, heartbreak. It's about, it's really about betrayal, to be honest with you. Uh, it, it, different levels of betrayal. What stunned me was how many different times someone in the book is betrayed. And everybody can relate to it because you've either been betrayed by a lover, a friend, a co-worker, somewhere in your life. Every, every time you turn around, there's some kind of form of betrayal that's occurring. And in this book, there's all those different levels. Uh, is this a, is this a book symbolically a psychological profile of the, um, the the frailties of of the human character or the human nature? Was that part of why you wrote it? I actually wrote it because there's so many women out there that I spoke to that when I was going through my greatest heartbreak of my life, first time I'd ever fallen in love in my life, not too long ago, I must say, um, I discovered the depth that heartbreak can take you into. And when I talked to other people, they were always talking about this betrayal. Of trust, and um, it really, it really, it really shows the frailties of, of certain characters and the strengths of others who survive betrayal regardless, uh, and how we all handle it differently. Yeah, no, well, I'm just going to say how I handle. I don't want to get into what how I handle, but when somebody betrays me, I mean, and I shouldn't, you know, this, I, I find it. I really, if there is forgiveness, it may be overtly, but deep inside, the, those lingering feelings of distrust always stay there. I mean, how do you regain yeah. trust back after a betrayal? Well, I'm like you. I don't. I can't. I, I shut the door and it's done. Because that for me, the only thing in life that really, really counts is the trust factor between two human beings. And once you've lost that, there's always that nudge in the back of your neck. Are they lying? Are they cheating? Are they breaking my heart again? And I, I don't know who. I, if you're if you can get over that, you're a great person. Because I certainly have. I'm like you. I can't. I can't get can't, past it. Can't can't do it. But I didn't write the book. You did. How much of this book and this the fictional. Uh, way you wrote it, the portrayal of it, uh, how much of it is really taken from factual events, people you know, and obviously put into a, uh, a novel? I would say it was very strongly influenced by uh, my last relationship. Uh, he was an obsessed Catholic. Uh, he used the Catholic Church as a way of justifying all this, his, the things he did to me that were not very nice, uh, to be politically correct, but uh he basically used his religion as an excuse, and I would say that a lot of the characters in the book all have, each character has a, a little bit of some people that I knew and a little bit of somebody else. So I'd say that, I, you know, uh, Stuart Banks and Maggie are probably most like me, a little bit with my characteristics. He's a detective, Stuart Banks. Uh, some of the lead characters have a bit of me, because um, I think what happens in life, the best stories are real-life stories that you make into fiction. Because if you really played them out for real life, people would say, that couldn't be real. I couldn't read that. So you have to take what's really happened and make it more into a fiction-type novel. Um, it wouldn't be just one person that would affect a character. There's been quite a few pre people that make up each character. But uh, to say that, yes, it was influenced by real life, absolutely. 
definitely influenced at the time by the articles and occurrences that were happening with the Catholic Church and the priests in the, in, in the news. I couldn't get away from that in Toronto. We were exposed by I don't know how many stories with the Catholic Church and the priests at that time. So that certainly influenced the book very strongly. Is this book more a statement for people, or is it just a story to read for entertainment and interest, or a combination? It's a combination. It's certainly controversial. I mean, if you... Um, I think what it is, is it has, it's romantic. It has a lot of romance in it. It shows you that the, the dark side of romance as well as the, as the good side of romance. It shows you how religion can blind you, uh, regardless of your religion or your personal facts or whatever member of group you're part of. It doesn't even have to be religion. It, it's a book that takes you on an adventure that gives you a different perspective on different things and maybe puts your life into perspective. I know that a lot of women who've read it say to me, oh, my God, that was me when I, and they tell you their story. And guys always go, that was, women don't act that way. I go, yes, they do. You know, so men read it and they go, once they get into the story, they go, I can't believe it. That's very interesting. It's a woman's perspective on that kind of stuff. Well, joining us is Cindy D. Noll, and the book is Betrayal. It is published by iUniverse. Do you have a website? I do. It's www.cdnolan.ca. All right, say it slowly. Okay, it's www.c, D like door, N like Norman, O L. A and like Norman. dot c a, and anybody who wants to uh, contact me, there's uh, contact the author. If you read my book and you want to send me an email, it's great. I do hear from people all over the world, and um, the book is slowly taking off and doing really well, and, and get great feedback. Uh, when you uh, when you completed this book, uh, and during the process of writing it, really, were you thinking, how can I write a book? That distinguishes itself. It distinguishes itself from books of the same vein. Oh, you're just writing it by saying, "I just want to write a real, real good book." And I know the market out there is crowded with a lot of good books, but I'm not. That's not really my objective. Ah, well, how's your thought process work? Well, you know, it was very interesting. I actually didn't set out to write this book. I went to a heartbreak counselor because I couldn't get over the heartbreak. It was so in depth. I had had my heart ripped out of my chest. I couldn't function. I couldn't breathe. It changed my whole life and perspective. And the guy said to me, why don't you write a short story of people's lives who are way worse than yours? It started out strictly as therapy. But when I sat down to write, I got so excited and consumed by a project that I totally left the heartbreak behind and wrote this story. And after I finished reading, I said, I finally have a book I can publish. I finally have a book I I know is so good that I can't put it down that I can publish it. Uh, so I didn't really set out to set a target or an audience. I knew there would be romance in it because I only read or mostly read romances. I read some a lot of self uh, improvement books, but I love romances. So it it really basically took on a life of its own. And when I finished it, it became that okay, this is worthy of publishing. Uh, is there a, are there other books in the pipeline for you? There is. I have great news. A lot of my um, my fans are writing me. When's it coming out? I have the, the detective Stuart Banks is going to be back for about six or seven books. The next book is called Dirty Little Secrets. It's totally not in the religious realm of that story. It's, he's on to a different case. Um, some of the favorite characters are back. Uh, some interesting things. There just might be a wedding involved. And um, so there's a lot of interesting challenges to his new story, which, of course, I will tell you, was influenced by things I've seen along my way over the years. I'll tell you what I like about hearing this. What's, you, you've taken a disadvantage, a heartbreak, a bad experience, and turned it into something positive. Could that be part of the message in this book, or at least people listening to you talk right now, that it, you know uh, that there are some things that are irreversible, there are others that therapy and time will cure, and you can take negatives and turn them into positives? That's definitely the message. I will tell you that when, in my deepest, darkest moment, I just thought I'd never get out of bed again. I thought this was it. And I'm a very strong, happy-go-lucky, very positive individual. So for me to get to that dark spot, to get so dark down there and think that there was no way out or there's no future was pretty tough to deal with. I mean, luckily I sought counseling to say, hey, how do I handle this? Even I can't handle it. But in your darkest moment, in that darkest place you ever get to, <clears throat> please remember that tomorrow has a brand new light, a new destiny, my life has changed completely because now I'm doing things I like to do. I love to write, and I think that there is hope for everybody. And the one thing I want to tell everybody out there, if you have a dream about writing a book, and I think like the nice thing is my dream is to turn this book into a movie, and it's being written into a script as we speak, so I'm getting very excited. Wow. Uh, your dreams do come true. 
Don't let, you know, a lot of times people would tell me, your, your book is a pipe dream, getting published is a pipe dream, because I will tell you, I was rejected probably 3,000 times before I got published. Um, they tell you, everything is a pipe dream, people will pull you back, don't let them. Keep following those dreams that you have, because you will make it if you just take little baby steps to get there. Well, I, I love what you're saying, and I think you're bringing out the importance of this book, not just in terms of the content, but as a as a tool for people to use to to yes. reconstruct their lives or to, or to self empower themselves. And, yeah, uh, life is so challenging, right? On a, on a good day. Oh, it really is. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And we have to, you know, I always say you got two choices: you can put your head in the sand like an ostrich, or you can look up and. Uh, Keep moving forward. I'm glad you've chosen the uh, the latter. Cindy D. Thank Nolan, you. the book Betrayal, published by IU. It's been a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Cindy, and I I look forward to dealing with you again. I have to move on quickly. Okay, so, have a great right. day.